Well, I thought we were gonna get by without having to do this this year, but we gotta run the pumps. We got three inches of rain overnight and more on the way, and the crick's already up pretty high. The ditches are up. Thankfully, the corn is pretty tall, so it can handle a lot of water. We're a little more worried about the beans yet. They're pretty small. We just changed this pulley over to a steel one. Last time we had to do this, one of the pulleys exploded, one of the leather pulleys that we had. So we found a couple steel ones. We stuck that on there. We're gonna go get the tractor. We don't have any oil here, do we? Is it 10W30 or what? We've been running John Deere oil. Oh, that's a half a gallon. It shouldn't be that low. Holy crap. Well, this is a 1941 Farmall M. It's been sitting for a very long time, and it, it just fires right up every time. It blows my mind. But this is our power unit. It's got a flat belt pulley. Um, I don't know if you've seen my video of us doing this last year. We run those pumps, well, one pump with a flat belt pulley. The other one we run with a PTO. Then we got another one that runs off electric motor. We're gonna get this thing filled up with gas, go down there, hook the belt up, and get that thing running. something just dawned on me that tractor is 80 years old this year it's a 41 it's 2021 80 years old I don't even want to know how many hours are on that tractor running these pumps and it just keeps going and going and going and knock on wood you can't kill it it fires right up it's got to have good compression it fires right up like it doesn't even barely turn over and it's running it's amazing I would like to see a modern tractor in 80 years do that Getting this flat belt set is a challenge because you've got to be almost perfectly lined up. Otherwise the belt will walk off to the pulley one way or the other. And we don't want it riding on that plate. That plate is there just 
to hold the belt while we're getting it set. You don't want it riding on it because then it'll tear up the belt. See if we got water. We're just running it slow for right now just to get everything kind of warmed up, make sure it's not going to fly apart since we just changed that pulley. So that pulley is obviously not mounted center. It's wobbling quite a bit, but there's weights in there. So the pump is not shaking too bad. So we're thinking it might be all right. Of course, we're not running it hard yet. Seems like those belts expand and contract. Once you run them a little bit, they start to stretch and it's already sagging down onto that plate. So I can tell we need to tighten it up. Normally if we would have gotten three inches of rain, we wouldn't worry about running the pumps, but there's more rain forecasted basically for the rest of next week. So we want to get these ditches down to where they can handle a little bit more capacity and not flood out our crops. Like I said earlier, thankfully the corn's pretty tall. Last year when we had to do this, we just got our corn planted and then we got five inches of rain on it. So the corn that was up was about this big and then the corn that wasn't up just got too wet and rotted in the ground so i hate to say it because you never know what's going to happen with the weather but the corn can handle a lot right now as long as we can get the water away timely the beans they're still pretty short i'm kind of concerned about those uh thankfully we've been pretty dry going into this so we can handle we could soak up a lot of moisture right now and we did need the moisture we were pretty dry i think we had uh we had about an inch before let's see an inch yesterday and the day before, and then three inches overnight. So we really don't need any more rain. We're good. Curves like a kitten and a milk pail. 80 years old, it's unbelievable. So I think this was a pretty big horse back in the day. I think it was rated at like 35 horsepower. I know this one has M&W rings and 
pistons maybe maybe just rings i don't know that was an old timer thing they always changed out the internals to get more horsepower so i'm thinking this one's closer to 45 but i'm not really sure we've never really dynoed it that's just kind of what i've been told but it's a good tractor it's really handy to have around so i just ran dad back to the house he was going to put a bale of hay out for the cows and then take his Kubota and put it on our PTO pump. Uh, the thing I'm worried about the most with all this rain coming is our wheat. Um, it's gonna be ready to cut next week and we're gonna get rain all week. So there's risks of it going down. It's already started to go down already in places where it got planted a little too thick like point rows and end rows and stuff. So I really don't wanna get any more heavy rain on it heavy wind and storms and stuff like that. The other thing you gotta be careful of is I've heard of the wheat germinating in the head if you get too much rain. So hopefully we don't have to deal with that. This is supposed to be seed wheat. Um, I don't really know what would happen. I don't even wanna think about what would have to happen if we couldn't get this cut for them. So just hoping for dry weather, hoping we can get this wheat out timely and get it in the bin and not have to fight it too much. So I don't know if you can see, but there's some spots over there and kind of through here that it's going down. Uh, it's just spots that it got doubled up. I guess you can see it here. These are kind of the spots that we don't like. That wheat will stay green and it won't dry if it's not standing. So it's going to be hard to pick it up off the ground and it's going to be wetter. So not ideal for seed wheat because you want it a uniform moisture. But I guess we're just going to have to see what happens on that anyway our other crops like our corn here they're all looking pretty good it's been pretty dry up to this point which is kind of what you want for this time of year that gets the roots to go down deep that way if you get you know if it turns off dry in the summer you'll have some roots down deep to get to that water that's lower in the ground i mean we were needing some rain but we weren't in bad shape yet so overall i would say our crops are like an, i mean if you average them all together i'd say they're an eight out of ten right now they look pretty darn good So I'm just gonna kinda sit here and babysit this thing for a little while before dad gets back and then I've gotta go home and be Mr. Mom for a while while Maria is out of town, which is fine. I like hanging out with my son. Um, anyways, you kinda gotta babysit this flat belt because if it gets wet or if the belt stretches, it could fall off and then the tractor's just sitting there running wide open not doing anything. So you really can't walk away from it. You know, like this PTO pump, you can just park it run it just walk away from it let it go but this belt you really got to babysit it you don't want to leave it for more than 30 40 minutes at a time because it you never know when the belt's going to fly off or if the belt broke or anything like that it's not just a set it and forget it thing you really got to pay attention to it i'm not sure if i'll get to get any shots of it before we leave or before i have to leave but this is our other pump um Sure some of you have seen this in the video last year but this one runs off of a jack shaft with a pto so it has i think there's three v belts real long v belts that come over and they run that pump so of course the grass has grown up so you can't see anything i'll see if i can show you in here but so this is kind of the jack shaft if you can see that there's a shaft that comes through here big huge pulley with the belts they shoot across and run that so we normally run this with the 1206 but dad's Kubota is a little more fuel efficient but we don't really want to put the hours on the Kubota but we don't want to put the hours on the 1206 so we really should just buy a cheap old tractor that we don't really care about to stick on this thing and just let it go still looking for one you know I got a buddy who's got a Deutz tractor that probably wouldn't burn hardly any fuel I should call him. This is what we call the Crick. It's the Little Beaver Creek, and this is our main drainage ditch. Um, it really needs to be dredged. It was dredged probably 15, 20 years ago. They came in here with a drag line and scooped it all out. I just barely remember it. They dumped all the sand on the ditch bank over there. But uh, it needs to be cleaned again because it seems like we don't, it used to be we could get five, six, seven inches of rain and it wouldn't hardly come up. Now it's like we get four inches of rain and it's touching the bridge over there. So it needs to be dredged again. We need to get on our drainage district to do something about that. Thankfully, it's not as big of a deal to do something like that. I, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen Tom Pemberton Farm Life. 
he is a dairy farmer he's got a youtube channel he's from the uk but they fight their drainage i don't even know what you call it the drainage authority or whatever over there they can't get anything done to get their farm to drain better so i think we're gonna have to start talking to them to get this thing cleaned out but where was i going with that oh so our ditches we have these two ditches side by side there's a ditch right there ditch right there that ditch drains everything across the road and in front of dad's house this ditch drains everything basically north of dad's house and then the stuff behind dad's house in this field right here so it kind of splits it up that way it's not all going into one ditch so there's a culvert that runs under the ground from the end of this ditch into the big creek so under normal drainage circumstances the water just drains through the pipe but then if we get a massive rain we can run the pump and help it out a little bit same thing over here there's a culvert under the ground it's a big huge like 24 or 36 inch culvert and it can drain a lot of water on its own but sometimes it just needs a little help with the pumps this is something that's kind of hard for people to understand who who don't farm in an area like we do our our ground is really low but it's not like swamp ground it's not just it's not like if we didn't have any drainage it would be underwater it's just when we get a lot of rain it's low enough that all the water from everybody else comes on us and you got to get rid of it in a hurry and i still cannot believe how well that tractor runs it's 80 years old i mean come on well here comes dad hopefully the wind's not too bad for you guys i got my mic cover on here i guess i haven't really had this new camera in the wind that much so hopefully you can hear me we're gonna get that kubota hooked up and get it running I ran over my corn. It's okay, it's his corn, it's not mine. Could probably cut that tree down. Seems like when you first start the pump up, it sucks all the mud out of the pipe. So it's uh, pretty nasty black water for a while, and then it clears up. Well, I gotta go home and take care of the little dude. So I think I'll probably just check in on this later. We'll see if the water's going down, see how much more rain we get, and we'll uh, catch back up in a little while. And we're back. It's about quarter till seven in the evening. Uh, this pump's still running. Looks like Dad's got the Kubota shut off. I'm not really sure what's the deal with that, but. It doesn't look like the water's gone down any, but we did have another shower come through. I'm gonna guess we got another half inch. Uh, it, it was coming down pretty hard there for a while, so. Looks like this one's doing pretty good. Now he said he hasn't had any trouble with the tractor or anything. At least last time I talked to him he did. But still moving some water. So normally in this creek there's about a foot to two feet of water in the bottom and I would say right now it's probably probably five feet deep so it's really not that high I've seen it a lot higher I've seen it to where it's touching the bottom of this bridge that I'm standing on and that was that was a lot of water we had a mess then but so far knock on wood we're in decent shape um, the rain hasn't come down just constantly it's kind of giving us some breaks in between to let things soak in 
Like I said earlier, we were pretty dry going into this, so that definitely helped. So I had a pumping video last year. Uh, I think it was back in May. I'll post the card to it right here in case you want to check that out. That video goes a little more in depth on these pumps and how they work and the capacity and all that. But, I mean, basically that simple. You get your 80 year old tractor, you get your flat belt that nobody has anymore, you stick it on your flat belt powered pump, which nobody uses anymore, and you just move water. That's all there is to it. We got plenty, we got plenty to move. We're probably gonna be running these for a while. I mean, at least till the end of the day and then probably some more tomorrow. But it's a shame we gotta babysit these things so much. You can't just really walk away from them because they get wet or whatever, belt stretches, belt breaks, it'll fall off and then you're just wasting fuel. We wanna convert this pump over to PTO power, that way we can just put a tractor on it and let it go and walk away from it, but we just haven't spent the money on it yet. Um, I don't know, it's, it's easy to justify, yet it's hard to justify at the same time. Preventing one crop failure more than pays for the pump, so it's gonna get done eventually. I think we're just kinda of waiting till this pump needs to be rebuilt because it still moves water really well so whenever it needs to be rebuilt we'll probably spend the money and get it switched over to pto power so i think that's going to be it for this video we got some more storms coming hopefully we kind of missed some of them we uh we're up over three inches now i think we're about three and a half here and then some of our farms to the south are more at like four and a half so hopefully we can miss a few of these next showers coming through there's there's pretty much a chance of rain all week, which kind of stinks. We have basically all of our beans to spray yet. We have wheat to cut. Um, it's just not a great time to be getting all this rain. So what do you do? That's farming. Anyways, if you liked the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.